What's up crypto junkies and welcome to our latest video training series. This series is sponsored by Hass Online Software. Hass Online Software creates one of the best auto trading bots. This bot will allow you to trade cryptocurrencies at the speed of professional level without the 20, 30, 40 years experience, my friends. What's up crypto junkies, it's Jay and welcome to part two of charting and I guess you could call this TA or technical analysis. In this video, I wanted to break down a couple of indicators that I left out in the first video and really dive a little bit deeper on some areas I felt I was a little too shallow as well as answer uh, hopefully a lot of the questions that I was asked after releasing part one. So the first big one, and we're just in Coinigy or Coinigy, whatever you want to call it, .com. There's a link underneath this video for you to go ahead and join. Um, out of the two, out of this in TradingView, I didn't know this before I made a comment in the last video, is that this will give you unlimited indicators. Even with a pro account here in TradingView, it'll only give you five. So I want to go ahead and clarify that point that you would actually be better off with just getting Coinigy because you have unlimited indicators and you're paying one fee. So if you want to kind of save money and get everything you need in one place, just buy a yearly on the maxed out account here, which is $182. I believe that on TradingView, it's like 150 a year. So unnecessary fee if you just want everything in one. And obviously this integrates all of your exchanges on here too. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the Bitfinex chart pulled up for BTC to US dollar. I wanna talk about volume. It's that thing that I muted out very first uh, beginning of the last video. And the reason why I muted it out is because it sometimes gets in the way when you're just trying to look at the numbers here. But this is a indicator that you should be looking at. Here's why. Okay, we talked about yesterday candles, right? Green is basically good, red is bad. Just like a stoplight, green is go, red means stop, okay? Okay. But in terms of volume, when we start to see pumps in volume happening, that tells us that we're probably going bullish. We're probably going up. And you can, like this is a six hour chart, but look, on a minute by minute chart, you're getting this data unveiled to you or displayed to you on a second by second basis. These, these things are changing. These candles out here are changing because this is real time. So you'd start to see this. And you, so in terms of indications and like entry points or when does this actually, what is this telling me? It would look like this. This volume here, we start to see this candle come up and this candle, this big candle right here, that would then be okay we start to look at coming in. This starts to look like our entry point. Using volume alone, you cannot use, but yesterday what I talked about is the fact that when you're looking at a chart, it's giving you uh, a story and there's a conversation going on here. What is that? Look, look. What? It's Hedwig, Harry Potter's owl. No, no, not that way, over there. Hedwig isn't real. Yeah, he is. And he's gonna take me to Hogwarts. The volume helps tell you, is there more people buying or selling right now? That's all this is supposed to do, all right? And so you can see this merging. It's not necessarily going to be that true in Bitcoin or the top five coins, but if you've got a dead coin that's been laying flatlined for a really long time and you start to see a pump up in volume, that's a buy signal. That's an indication for you to get in as well and that there could be a pump on the horizon. Now this as a, a sole indicator, like as the only thing that I use to trigger going in or not going into this market, probably a bad idea. But it's a great indication to tell you where the conversation is going and what the current dialogue really is. Meaning that are we buying right now or are we selling right now? That's kind of the story that we're looking for. With a chart like BTC, it's not gonna be as big of a tall tale sign as like fun or arc or the smaller coins 10x coin right and especially i'd say to take that a step further if you've got like i said a flatline coin that's just been dead like verge has been dead for a while 10x has been dead for a little while <laughs> and you started to see this volume spike then i'd start to chart that so you could just set an alert for a volume spike understand that too you could start to just set alerts for yourself on when to take a look at a market. And we'll talk more about that. 
Alerts are really, really good signals. And they're also a good way to revive uh, bags that you're holding. So if I'm holding a ton of bags, you've been sitting on them for a little while and you kind of stopped reading the charts, stop really watching and paying attention, you could use um, alerts to help remind you to bring you back to that coin, right? Like if it hits over, you know, like let's say it's been flatlined at 500 Satoshi, you could set an alert at 600 or 700 and that would tell you that we're on a, p a possible bull breakout, okay? Okay. All right, so that's volume. The next one I wanted to elaborate on more is MACD and really using uh, moving averages. I felt like I didn't go into the detail that I wanted to in the last video, and it's because it was 45 minutes long and we chopped it down to 33. We chopped out a lot of we needed. All right, so I added MACD to the bottom. That's uh, moving averages, convergence, divergence. This brings it down here. I can pull it and put it onto this chart up here though. So let's drop out volume for now. And let me show you how you would do this. You would just simply bring in MA again, moving average, and we chop up two of those and we just change the settings. So we need our 12 day and 26 day, because remember it's 12 day and 26 day moving average. You could look at it as long and short, fast and slow. I call it fast and slow, but we can't have the same color either. So 26 day, what color should we use to represent slow? What do you think? I think we use baby blue. And then for fast, we use pink. So when the fast is above the slow, that's good. <laughs> and when the fast crosses over the slow and it's underneath, that is an indication as well. So it's not good. Let me further define that too. Is that means that when we cross over, that means something's gonna happen down here. That means that we're gonna have a changeover. And when the fast moving average is below the slow, that usually means that it's not a tall tale sign that the market is going to bear up or correct, uh, but it does mean that there's going to be a shift and we need to look at the data now here on the histogram and on the MACD itself. <coughs> Let's now define these lines again. This blue line is the relationship. This is like if we go in and look, this is the MACD line. What is the MACD line? It is the comparison of these two moving averages. So it is the comparison of the 12 day moving average and the 26 day moving average okay and then this nine line is the signal line that is the moving average of this line heavy i know right a little bit but what we basically got going on is just like how we're looking at the 12 and 26 day here we're looking at the combination of those two in essence on this blue line and how that's interacting with the nine day interval of that convergence very similarly, when we go down here and the blue goes below the red, we're going to see a shift. And this is a little bit stronger of an indication that we're going to bear up a little bit. And then when we cross back over, bull, cross back under, bear. And so this is where that assumption comes from. All right. So that I hope that helps to further elaborate what these two mean. Now, let's take into consideration, really bring in the third element here, which is the histogram, which is just another visual representation of what we're seeing with these two lines. But the reason why this is good is because this can actually give you market structure and information about the market itself. You know, to give you some basic market trends, M's are usually uh, bearish and W's are usually indicators of a bull market. So we can see that sometimes this actually comes into play in our histogram. So we can start to see, you know, out of the randomness, we can start to see an M formulation here. This might even be a little W formulation here because we did have, if you look, this is a slight M here and what followed. And so this isn't what's happening right now. This M wouldn't tell me that like right now it's, it's correcting. It actually says that there's a correction or a bear um, coming up and so what do we see we saw a small little M here and then we saw a correction come just after that this indication does start to tell you and predict the future based on all of the data that we're getting here with the histogram um, reading some a little bit of market structure in there and then that in comparison and using side by side with the rest of the MACD data but this in and of itself isn't enough we need a little bit more so that's when you would bring in an oscillator like RSI or Stash you could bring in Stash RO, uh, RSI ROI <laughs> thinking about return on investment you know what I'm saying RSI because MACD the reason why people use it is because it is an extreme example of overbought and oversold we use this 
and we layer it with RSI to really make our decision. So here's our 80 line, which remember 70 to 80 gets into that overbought territory and 20 to 30 gets into that oversold territory. So this is our extremes right here. And we're getting a little bit of uh, market indication with uh, bull and bear indications, okay? And the actual market structure. So when we start to layer these things and we've got our market volume happening, We've got our moving averages telling us a little hint. We've got our MACD telling us little hints. And we've got our RSI further confirming overbought, oversold. And the whole reason why you even use this overbought, oversold as an indicator in and of itself, and now we've got one, two, three, four additional indicators telling us a little bit more of that story, is because when it's overbought, you can assume that there's a correction coming. And when it's oversold, you can assume that there is a uh, bull market coming. That's it. That's all we're doing. So all of what I just showed you gives us another little uptick, gives us a further confirmation of where is this market going. And if we went off of just this here, this isn't enough to tell us because we, were, we would actually be looking for a W within this histogram without a closing. So this is one and then we're closing into another one because you could just come back and just say, oh, well, everything's a W and an M. No, we're actually looking for it within the motion itself so that is a little m there this isn't really anything and then the rest is just they're they're just market uh shapes so looking here we've got a, a slight little crossover which we had a, a little correction in btc and now we crossed over again right here here's our little dip being conveyed again where we can start to hack this further is on our one minute charts remember that our different our data is going to look a little differently so these you notice how these lines showing down an RSI and Stash is another great one to use because this really shapes and changes on the, the shorter timeline, okay? Okay, okay. Shorter timeline candles or charts. But in a one hour, look at the difference. Look at how much differently that looks. That looks like we're, we're actually heading back up. And what would our data on MACD say? Well, it actually says that we're heading we're going north still. So if RSI were to contradict my data and say like, whoa, wait a second, we're actually really, really overbought right now, but these were showing that we could go up, again, you'd need to take that into further consideration. So if we kept playing around with just Stash and MACD through our one, five, 30, and 60 minute candles, yeah, this starts to tell you a lot of different pieces of data. You know, when, if we were to pull out to these further windows, then Stash tells you less and less. This to me is a great indicator of like right now, but just understand that with moving averages, you will need also too, you will need a oscillator with the MACD and just moving averages. So I hope that makes sense on MACD. Okay, and the next one that I wanted to show you about was, and going deeper on was the Fib retracement tool. I felt that I was incredibly vague yesterday. Let me attempt this one again. The retracement tool is to retrace a certain action that we're seeing in the market. So the best way to use this tool is on the way up and on the way down. You know, upward trending and downward trending markets. What I mean by that is, let me just show you, okay? Okay. A Fib retracement. So what we would do to figure out where we're gonna cap off here. Let's say this hasn't happened yet and we're trying to retrace this motion from here. We could even go back down here to the lowest shadow of this candle up to maybe here, which would be the highest high. And what we're just trying to do is to retrace that motion and that would tell us what we could possibly fall back down or decline back down. So let's, let's just try and... What that's doing essentially is our one mark is the lowest low and our zero mark is the highest high so we could just trace this back down technically you could keep going all the way down to zero but with btc market i don't think we'll ever really go that low and actually i think we just crossed through a doorway recently to where some of the earlier predictions of a 1800 some people were scheduled out to 2800 ish to 3000 some people were scheduled out to i don't really see that happening now because that's all the way down into here, which is 1.6, okay? Yeah, the 3,000 range, 28 to 3,000 is right in there. But you could use this to see, I love the, the news indicators, the little news pop-ups, to see how much this could fall down, right? And so we could match this one mark that we got from this, this run-up here, 
and it could fall all the way back down, but most likely it won't. This is a predictive indicator to show you the resist, or excuse me, the support points for where things will probably settle and where they could bounce back. Well, why you'd want to see that if we're up here and we're retracing a, a bull run is we want to see where the bear could correct down to. Let's now pick out some points here. So the 236 line is very popular. So that's a support zone that we can expect it to bounce off of, meaning that the market likes that line. It likes the support there. We might see it bouncing there. The next big one, even though it's not technically Fib retracement, 50% isn't part of the Fibonacci sequence rather. And I mentioned this in the last video is uh, whoop, the 50% line is another big one that we see motion on. But every single one of these to a degree is now support, by the way. And we'll see a big one from where the market was really most active recently right down in here. And if you look on this line, as long as you trace it pretty accurately, you should see a lot going on on this line. So let's just take a look, make sure that I'm correct. And for the most part, what do we see? We see support. Boom, boom, boom. What are we on? Six hour candle. So we see a major amount of support happening on this line. All of these candles, this little grouping of candles here. We got a eh, couple there, this one, these three. So we dipped down and we tested on this resistance, or excuse me, on this support line. And the market said, no, we're not willing to go lower than that. We're not, uh, we're not willing to drop lower than that right now. I actually jump into a one day. So there's our line once again, which it definitely, you see less candles. So it's showing less support actually being there. But trust me, if you were to jump into the one hour, six hour, etc., you'd see quite a bit of support actually happening on these lines. The 786 line is popular, the 618 line and 382. But if you just want two to look at, this 50% line is really a make or break line. Meaning that once you've, um, once you've crossed over here the next point you could expect would not be at the 618 it would be at 786 and with Bitcoin it's always making its own rules but those are the traditional assumptions right so the big motions are around the 38 and then down here in the 786 okay so we kind of skip through this middle ground a lot of times so that's how I would look at how much will this market correct let's just get rid of this one and let's do the opposite now and let me give you a whole lot more here with a bear market so we gotta we're, we'll have to dig back down or maybe you know what why don't we switch up the chart here i think eth would probably be a better example okay so now we go back and we'll, this is all part of our ta that we're running on let's say eth we want to come into uh, ethereum how much can we really bull run well we come back to this last correction which i have to move it here to get the just the tippy top which is what i want here we need the top of this candle to the bottom of that candle so that's our floor that's our floor right there and the more accurate we get on that wick the more accurate our data okay so this is our zero point this is the lowest low that i could find in that bear now what we can assume is that on the way back up okay let's look at our 236 and what are we looking for we're looking to where this the market supported that line and if you look we have been testing hard on this line now. So we tested, nope, nope, not ready. Dip back down, we tested, we broke through here, and now we're on our move up. So chances are that this is now gonna be a historical support line, meaning that if the market decides to come back down, it will test and bounce off of this line more times than it'll break through it because it's notoriously now support. And if we go, and let's just chart all these out here really quick. Here's the next support line, which you see was tested and now we broke through today because this is the one day. So now we're on today's wick or candle. Oops, we look at where else could we go to with this? Well, here's our 61%, here's our 78%. So this would be a 78% gain from the bottom. So 78%, 61%, 50%, um, 38%, 23%. We've already blown through this one. We've blown back through uh, this line here just today. So in this range, now we're gonna see a lot of motion. Okay, so we're approaching the 50% line because that's where a lot of motion actually happens is at this, this line right here. Let's color this one a different color. Let's call this one red. <laughs> blown through 38 today, and now we're rapidly approaching the 50% line. So you can start to make assumptions by looking at historical data too, because okay, let's go back and we've got our 23%. And we see, okay, has that been supported in the past? Nope. Nope. 
this is our big cluster right here of action and then we start to go back and look at just where things were supported on the historical data side that's where a lot of the technical analysis uh, conversation actually happens is it's it's going back through older data and seeing what was going on and what price points were supported things like that right if we were to see a full 100% uh, gain on this and 100% retracement would put us right back here and a 100% retracement is not out of the uh, out of the picture or crazy or out of the ordinary at all so a lot of guys are usually looking at this 100% to see where could this whole thing go and I'll tell you what, if you would have gotten back in down here, when we started hitting this really low low, even if your, your entry points were down in here, you would still be in really, really good shape um, as we're going back up in the market. Because what was that? What, what is our chart actually on? Okay, so we're down in the 12, the 10 to $12 range. So where did we dip? $9 we dipped in at on ETH. So you could have come in at around 9 to $10 and you're at 15 now, say at $5 on your entire, all your positions, you'd be up right now, uh, $5. But on 100% retracement, we'd be back up to $25. Your entry point and all your positions would have been picked up at that nine to 10. So you'd be you know, 15 to $16 ahead per position, you know, so that would be good. That'd be really, really good. <laughs> So yeah, that's what this is. So I hope that helps kind of bridge that gap a little bit more with how to actually use the retracement tool. What we're looking to do is retrace a motion, a motion in the market that went down or went up. So when we trace it and we're looking at the upswing, we're looking at, okay, where could it correct on the way down? That's our buying points. That is our entry points. And the 50% line is a big one on entry points. So we would start looking at it after it went and it um, corrected past the 50% line. Again, with BTC, I don't know if that's always gonna be true. You might wanna create a different and more aggressive strategy, but that's a general rule of thumb, okay? Okay. When we do it and we retrace a bear like this, we get to see where could it go. Where's 100% retracement on a bull market? So I could have gotten in down here. What I'm really looking for is this 100% retracement, which it'll get, it'll go close, right? If not in this run, on the next one, you're obviously, this is where you start to take profit. I think most guys would probably be in profit already in the six, 61% and 78%, but you know, you'd, you'd obviously be holding on for a hundred percent retracement too. It's not guaranteed that that's going to happen, but this is a really great indication tool of where the market's going. It might not be in this run over these next couple days, but traditionally it tends to recycle and use the same pattern over and over and over again. So history repeats itself a lot in um, market analysis and technical analysis like this. So that's why the Fibonacci sequence really is a powerful tool to retrace those patterns with and see what the future looks like. It'll be interesting to watch this. You know, we're shooting this on November 10th. So we'll see how far up this retracement actually happens. If you were to use this as your base indicator and then layer on some oscillation and some of the other things that we talked about like MACD moving averages, you would be getting even more information and being able to tell what the market is ready to do. Heck, I mean, even just flicking back on volume tells us, oh, what's going on here? We have an insurgence of volume over the last couple days. What day was that? That was the sixth, fourth, fifth, and sixth we start to come in with more volume, which gave this pump down a few days. But yeah, so even basic volume tells us that we're we're in the process of a um, of a little bowl here. All right, so that wraps up this video. This is part three of the ten part trading series that we're doing with the Hass Bot Online. You can expect us to dive into the bot next and go through some simulation trading and really the ins and outs and how to use that thing. But I really hope that you've been getting a lot of value so far and learning a lot about how to read charts and really how to take on this next big step. I know that for a lot of you, it could be big, it could be scary, uh, but I tell you that it will be worth it in the end. And those that stick through to the end will be rewarded in more ways than one. So if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, you're crazy. We're one of the fastest growing YouTube channels in the crypto space. Join the community, join the family, and be sure to jump over to the Discord chat where there's over 700 people from all over the world now in that chat group talking away, helping each other, and further building this community out. And be on the lookout because we'll be shooting and releasing part four very, very soon. 
all you have to do to get your own copy of the Hass Online Trading Bot is simply click on the link, you'll be dropped off at the home page, click on the pricing tab at the top, which will redirect you to the three different license options that they have. They have the beginner license, the simple, and the advanced license. I suggest if you have zero trading experience, you go ahead and start with the beginner. If you have experience with trading, reading charts, and actually executing trades on an open exchange, then opt for the simple or maybe even advanced license. Once you've decided which license you want, click on the green buy now button and it will redirect you to pick out how long or the duration of license you want. You have the choice between a three month, a six month and a 12 month license. Once you've made your decision, go ahead again and click on the green buy now button and you'll once again be redirected to now the cart page. You have to decide how many of the licenses that you want. I'm gonna stick with one and click on add to cart. This is where one of the insanely great benefits of being part of the Crypto Junkies community comes into play. They have set up an exclusive discount code for our community, which is we type that in and apply it and it applies almost a 20% discount to our cart and to our total price. You'll see that coupon code applied here. And when we're ready, we just go ahead and click on this purplish proceed to checkout button. Now we're gonna go ahead and be redirected to where we have to put in our billing details. So let me just go ahead and do that. We scroll down to the bottom and we have two payment options, a Bitcoin payment, or we can pay with our BitPay account. We check the box that says I've read and accept the terms and conditions and finally place the order. If you've selected the Bitcoin payment option, you'll be able to go ahead and send the money to that address. And if you've selected BitPay, you'll be able to go ahead and process through using your credit card. Congratulations, you've gone ahead and gotten yourself all set up with the Hass Online Trading Bot and you're ready to go. Now all you have to do is log into your account and you'll see under the downloads tab all of your downloads, your license key and all the information that you need to go ahead and take the next step and start using your brand new trading bot.